So what's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Gianni Drive. My name is Sam and this is my new garage. I had this lift for about three weeks now, so it's not enough time for me to judge reliability of it. Quality wise, I think it's a nice product, but only time will tell. So this is a wildfire lift and I think other four post lift, they are about the same size, uh, but you can certainly get wider ones. So if you are considering a lift, these are some measurements you should take for your garage. The most important one is the height. If you have less than 8 feet, you might as well forget about it. Unless you have a car like this, uh, like a Lora 7 or Aero Atom, uh, it's going to be very difficult to stack cars on top of each other if you have less than 8 feet. So the other one is to measure the height of the cars. Uh, so measure car number one and also car number two, add the height together and then add another 10 inches on top of those two measurements. And that will give you enough height for the first car down here, the second car, and then the 10 inches are for this ramp, which is about four inches, five inches down here for clearance for the car on the bottom. And then you might need another three to four inches on top over there because when you are trying to bring this car down uh, you need to release the locking mechanism on here uh, so you need to lift it up a little bit and then you're able to release it by pulling this down so those are critical measurements so for my particular garage it's 23 feet deep and 18 feet wide and the height from the floor to the ceiling is 9 feet and 2 inches. But some areas are taller than other. Safely is about 110 inches. Car number 1 is that Porsche 914. It's about 44 inches. Car number 2, my 240Z, is about 47 inches. And then I added 10 inches to it. And I had 101 inches. So that allowed me another extra 10 inches. And that's why there is quite a bit of room down here for the 240Z and also a little bit of room on top over there. So my cars, they are modified, they are lowered. So after you do the ceiling height and then you do the car measurements and you add 10 inches on top of that, then you can go online and start doing research for your lift. most common one is the four post lift like this one which is used for storage uh, you can get a two post lift which is used by a lot of mechanics and then you can get a single post lift I actually considered that one for quite some time but those are ridiculously expensive if you get a good quality one I was considering the M1 single post lift when I called the vendor uh, they gave me a quote it was $15,000 just to buy it, not including delivery, taxes, and installation. So the other one is a Caesar style lift, and uh, there's one called Auto Stacker. I considered that one too. That one started $10,000 also. It's a very expensive one. So a budget is something to consider, and you can buy some cheaper ones. Uh, as I said, the Wildfire is $5,000. Uh, ben Park, which are very popular, are also over $5,000. But you can go from that to $15,000 for the single post to even $35,000 if you get the one uh, you see at uh, Hoovy's Garage. So that was my budget. You do need to measure your garage opening uh, and modify the railing and also uh, the lift. You need a side mounted lift. And then also electrical is something to consider. Uh, this lift, it runs on 110 volts and uh, 26 amps. This garage, I have 15 amps, so I do need an electrician. It runs okay, but if I put a heavy car on top, I'm pretty sure it will be struggling. Eventually, I will get 20 amp breaker installed. This particular lift is actually 9 feet wide. It's a little bit over 9 feet wide if you include... Uh, the base plate and then from this edge 
all the way to the other edge is over 15 feet. The pole on this one, they are almost eight feet high and my garage door will not clear that. I had to install that lift on the side over there. Uh, the other one I had was in the middle of the garage and also modify this railing here uh, because the other one came right, right over here. But you have that bolt on top of it and you have to include that. So if your door is gonna hit it or the ceiling are not that high, you do need to consider that bolt over there. Uh, so I'd say if you have eight feet or less, maybe put your car on airbags and then when you put it on top, you can lower it, that will help. Or buy some small cars like the Aero Atom. If you're considering like buying a car and you don't know how tall it is, you can actually just Google it and see if it'll actually work. The single post made sense to me because it's very compact and it will be able to fit in this garage without occupying so much space, but it's very expensive. If you have a narrow garage, it's going to be a little bit tight to park another car on the side. So this does allow me to park smaller SUV over here, but even then it's tight and I can only open the doors from the driver's side. And that's the reason I actually wanted a single post so my wife can still park here and she will not have to deal with that post being in the middle of the garage. Especially when you drive in, the approach is a little bit tighter. So to save the garage space, I was willing to pay up to $10,000 for that single post. But there are other costs associated with it, uh, like taxes, uh, installation fee, delivery fees. If you get a single post, uh, those need to be anchored to the floor. The one I considered, it requires about six inches of concrete. And since I don't know how deep my concrete is on this floor, if I were to go with a single post, I had to hire someone to come and x-ray the floor just to make sure it's the right thickness and also we are not drilling on the lay bar. And if you have a post that actually requires an air compressor, it's another thing you need to consider. The wildfire is a manual lift. You do not need air compressor. And that's one of the things I liked about it. But I got that lift because the vendor that I called, they said they can deliver it and install it. And I don't have to do anything. All I had to do is write a check. So they eliminated the headache of me figuring out the delivery and also offloading the lift because that thing is over 2000 pounds. So when they bring it, you need to get a forklift to unload it or have a bunch of friends to come and help you unload it and also put it together. But I paid someone to deliver it and install it and that's why I paid a little bit more. Uh, but it saves my back and that's something of value to me also. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.